G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Just a quick uh, quick video for you here today. Um, PFSense. Now I've been playing with PFSense for a couple of months now after it was recommended to me by a subscriber of mine and also having done some reading on the forums and that and I've actually found it better than Untangled. When I first tried PFSense a long time ago, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought it was shit. I seriously thought it was shit. But over the last few months of testing and playing around with it and trying it out, I've changed my opinion. I reckon it's great. I, I, to be honest with you, I think it's going to be my firewall of choice. <clears throat> Mainly with its flexibility, its robustness, uh, how secure it is. Everything just seems so much better than Untangled. The downside to it is, obviously, the installation is non-GUI, okay? It's CLI, so it, it, it's much like Unix, as you can see. But the fact that everything is blocked and you have to punch through it, which is better than Untangled, where everything is open and you've got to close it. So this is very quickly probably going to become my firewall of choice. Now... Admittedly, you can, like with Untangled, you can buy a PFSense appliance already made, or as I've done here, I've downloaded PFSense Firewall. We're going to put it on some hardware. The easiest way to do this would be option number one. I'll just push enter. As it uh, boots up. Now, PFSense being is also, as I said, Microsoft are using it. Um, other high-end companies are using it as well, mainly because of its security. Uh, and from what I've heard with um, what's happening with Untangled, I think I'll be migrating to PFSense. Now, you, my viewers, know that's a big call for me to move from Untangled away from a firewall I have trusted for so long and I'm now moving to a, you know, another firewall. As you can see, much like most Unix stuff, the uh, post-test is lengthy. It's quicker. There's one of my dual-core i3s here. I've got 8 gig of RAM in it, 2 NICs. What I did have to do, though, is turn off the USB 3 uh, system within the BIOS. When I had it on... PFSense didn't like it. As soon as I turned off USB 3 controller and just left USB 2 on that, perfectly all right. So if you have got a USB 3 computer that you want to use, now what I will say is obviously whatever you used, it's got to have at least two NICs in it. Um, but this is the general setup for it. The um, It's a little bit lengthy to start obviously install it's got to test everything and uh that so once we get into the setup screen we'll come back all right well we're still slowly getting there a couple of minutes later you can see that uh sarah's a burning from the cd partition and it's already created its uh mfs partitions in the var the etc and obviously the home partition and uh, obviously the 32-bit compatibility path has also been set. It is a lot quicker to physically install than Untangled. Um, and I guess that's a testament to BSD's um, setup. Um, as we know with the e-server, you know, put open BSD on it and it took about, you know, only a few minutes and a whole operating system was installed. The problem is, is obviously getting to the installation path and um, getting it all set up. And I guess that's uh, it's now initialising the system, so launching the initialising system. As I said, with, with the slowest part of this whole process is getting to the installation system. And... Uh, can um, basically get it to start. 
and now we wait. All right, so the installer mode is selected. Now, as I said, this is probably the slowest part of getting to the installation side of PFSense. One thing I did notice with PFSense was um, on the WAN side of things, a lot is shut by default. You have to punch through it, which is a bit of the reverse when it comes to um, Untangled, where everything's open and you've got to shut it. So here is uh, the setup for Untangled, for, sorry, for PFSense. Now, what you'll see here is your, your console settings, which you can just leave basically as default and you accept these settings then you have three options or a couple of options there you've got quick and easy install custom install what I would normally recommend is quick and easy uh, which pretty much gets everything set up but what we're going to do is custom install and we're going to set the hard drive you don't need uh, you don't need much else and uh, you just basically set it up like that and you can uh, get rid of all your data now remembering when you're setting stuff up like this the hard drive you're putting this on the data will be destroyed so make sure whatever hard drive you're going to use you don't want the data and we now Accept and create. Yes. Yes. And basically what you do is you just follow the instructions on a custom install. Okay. The reason we're doing a custom install is mainly because we want to be able to do the uh, NICs individually. Now, I don't know whether or not, at, at the moment I have an Onborg real te uh, yeah, real Technic and a Intel Pro 1000 PCI NIC, so we're obviously going to have to wait and see if that gets going. All right, so once it's all installed, we'll come back. Okay, so once you've come up with this screen, which is obviously installing the kernel, I would probably recommend standard kernel. Um, especially if what you're putting it on doesn't have a DB9. As you can see here. As I said with most of the BSD stuff, the installation's really, really quick. All right, so we'll come back as soon as this is done and uh, we'll go through the rest of the setup. So, finished. Pretty quick. Reboot the computer. And just, I would probably be inclined to just, uh, you'll see there. Now, we're not gonna do the uh, website of this. We're just gonna do it from setting it up on the host system. And uh, obviously we'll, you can see there the password. You can always change that uh, to whatever you need. Just uh, make sure you get the uh, boot disk out before you um, boot into your new system because for some reason PFSense won't eject that disk. And then you, um, you push F1. The upside to this, and as you can see here, we've got, uh, you can just let it go into auto boot mode. The, uh, the upside to this, it's already picked up the uh, LAN and WAN ports, so you can set your WAN and LAN ports whichever way you want them. <coughs> it's, uh, it's no biggie. Uh, you can also set up your VLANs if you're going to run VLANs. I don't run VLANs here. And you can also set up wireless clone interfaces as well. 
as well as, and it comes as standard with OpenVPN settings already uh, ready to roll if you're going to use that. And there it is. All done. That is setting up PFSense from the hardware side. Now, obviously, you can then go and assign your interfaces. You can set interface IPs if you want them static. Uh, you can reset it to factory defaults if you want to do that. The um, what I would be doing in the case of if this is if you're going to put this between, say, uh, you have um, a Windows domain server, a PDC, and a modem, and Obviously, some modem firewalls aren't as robust or um, hardened up, and you're going to put this in. What I would do would be to put this between your modem and your PDC. So as far as your PDC is concerned, it sees this as access out. In actual fact, this then talks to your modem. So what you could do is say um, your WAN interface. Now, obviously, I haven't got WAN and LAN set up yet, but your WAN interface could be DHCP'd from your modem uh, on a you know one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot whatever uh, on a Class C subnet of two five five two five five two five five dot zero. Okay. And then what you could do is, say, set your LAN interface, which is obviously between this and your ADS PDC, or Active Domain Server slash Primary Domain Controller, whichever way you want to look at it. And you would have the WAN interface, or sorry, the LAN interface on this being the gateway address from the Windows Server. Same with, it'd be basically the same as a Linux server as well. So, say you're running a 10.1.1. whatever uh, IP range, and you might set this on 10.1.1.100 as the gateway on 255.255.255.192. So that way, if you've got an ADS PDC and people are using it as part of a domain of some state, their gateway address would be PFSense. And obviously, the NAT system within PS Sense or Network Address Translation is done automatically between the LAN and the WAN interfaces. So the users see this as the gateway, but in actual fact, this then talks to your modem. Now, um, as I said, most of them are set up exactly the same way. But what I'm finding with PFSense is it's a hell of a lot more secure and it's very much hardened up compared to Untangled. So that's basically a quick setup for PFSense. And soon, or, soon we'll do a uh, web interface configuration of it too and I'll show you how to set that up as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.